Sam Kendall is a puppeteer, writer, and director who's been making puppet videos for the internet for over a decade. His show, The Mo Show, starring his puppet Mo Monster, has proven that Sam is a master at writing, directing, editing, and performing puppetry for the web. I sit down to talk to Sam about The Mo Show, his new series, Rooming with Dino, and much more on this episode of Under the Puppet. You're listening to Saturday Morning Media, and now, back to our show. Welcome to the show that is preserving puppetry through the personal stories of professional puppeteers. My name is Grant Pachoco, and this is Under the Puppet. Sam Kendall, welcome to Under the Puppet. Hello. Uh, I'm so excited uh, to be on the show. It's been such a journey. (laughs) I'm so excited to have you here. You are one of my favorite uh, creators to watch videos of on the internet. And um, so I'm super excited to talk to you today about how that came to be and your process and all that. Um, but uh, I always like to start by asking, do you remember your first exposure to puppetry? The first time you saw puppets? Uh, yes. I was trying to think about this because uh, I don't know if this counts entirely, but I was I was a big Thomas, Thomas and Friends kid when I was little. Sure. Sort of motion-y kind of a thing. Um, but I was not, I was not a huge, or at least I didn't admit to being a huge, uh, Sesame street kid when I was little, cause my, my sister, my older sister really liked it. And I remember I was like, well, that's, that's her thing. I don't, I don't engage with that. But I remember there was one time where like she was watching it and she left the room and it was like an Elmo's world segment on. And I was like, like fixed. And I was like, and get so like engaged with it. And then I was like, wait a minute, I'm not, I'm not supposed to like this. And then I like left the room. But I think I I think I secretly liked it. Uh, there's that, and then uh, I know the Upside Down show was a show I really liked when I was little, and that had a lot of puppet stuff in it. And also, before I really became like a fan of the Muppets or anything, my dad just showed me Manamana, and I thought that was really cool. And I I remember I put on a wig and I tried to act out Manamana. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that that's probably my my those are my earliest puppety memories. Yeah, and you, I mean, if you you started very at a very young age <laughs> doing this puppet stuff, uh, what was like the what was the inspiration to just like I'm gonna build a puppet, I'm gonna see how this works and and build a puppet. Yeah, uh, when I was really little, I saw the the 2011 Muppet movie when that came out, and I love it. I loved it, and I still love it. Uh, and I was like, wow, this is awesome. And I like, I didn't really know anything about the Muppets beforehand. I had practically no exposure to them other than Monomena. So I was like, oh, that's really cool. And for like a few months, I was like, wow, these guys are real. The Muppets are real. And then all my friends and my sister were kind of like, hey, uh, it's, it's kind of a, they're kind of puppets. Uh, so I was like, what? And I had to, I had to take, uh, take that information uh, the, the hard way. But uh, it ended up being beneficial. <laughs> uh, and then that Christmas, I asked for, you know, like all the you know, Muppet Show DVDs. And I got the, the Muppet Whatnot kit, like the Velcro one that you could put like the eyes on and stuff. I got that and I made this character called Jack Jackson. Uh, and that was sort of like my first character. And then uh, I also got a, a sock puppet kit from my, my Aunt Diane. And then I only had a character named Bob and they were very, very simple puppets. I had the Bob had like paper eyes and he just had like a, some feathers for hair. And I remember I, as I would do him where he was like a sock puppet, just a plain sock puppet. And then a glove, like a black glove would be his hand. And my dad was like, doesn't it need some kind of like connection to like show that's like his arm? I'm like, no, no, that's fine. Don't. <laughs> and then I guess that summer 2012, I guess I just, I liked YouTube a lot and I was, I watched a lot of YouTube and I'm like, I, I, could, I could probably do that. So like my mom and my sister and again, my aunt Diane, who I think came to visit that summer, like we started making a few videos and it was just like behind the couch. I would hold a Mo, very early version of Mo and uh, they were not super complex. I was like, all right. So number one was like, all right, so there's an angry dog. And I had like this dog that like I got like a carnival or something. And I just like ho- it was a like, plush and I like hollowed him out. Just turned into a puppet. And my aunt would be the dog. And I'm like, okay, so you're a dog and you're angry at Mo. Uh, that's all I got. Let's do it. And then it was like, 
two minute video or whatever of just this dog yelling at Mo and then he bites him or something. I don't really remember what it was. But uh yeah, it did not not start out super super complex, but that was sort of how how the YouTube stuff uh started. Well, and it seems like I mean you've mentioned um you know, uh, your parents, uh, helped you out with stuff. Your sister helped you out with stuff. Your aunts helping out your stuff. Do you come from a creative family? Was your family creative? Uh, or yeah. are they still creative? Not that they're yeah, all they're, gone. They're <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. My sister, my sister's uh, a musician, so she's creative. She, uh, helped do the Mo Show theme song. When I ran into her room at like two in the morning, I was like, Hey, so what if you play your trumpet and it's, it's the Mo Show. Da-na-na-na. She was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, my parents are both writers. Uh, my mom has done, she's a bunch of commercial stuff. She had a, a, an Advil commercial in the Super Bowl one year. Uh, and then my dad wrote for Letterman for like 20 ish years, I think. Um, and he had done a bunch of stuff like that. And yeah, they were both, they're all like super, super supportive, which I, I, I cannot thank them enough for. But, um, yeah. And then, yeah, they, they sort of taught me a little bit about like, they would like, you know, well, they would help with the camera and holding the camera. And I would say like, can you flip? I would always ask my mom, like, can you flip it around so I could see it? And she's like, but then I can't see it. <laughs> that was always a thing. Uh, and my dad, I remember my dad like taught me a little bit how to edit, but yeah, they're, they're always, they've always been super supportive and, and help me, help me figure stuff out. Like, well, it's so funny that you, you say that, um, your parents are both writers and, you know, have experience kind of writing for, for TV because, uh, and I was going to ask this question later on, but one thing I love about your videos is like the snappy dialogue. Like you just really have this great quick dialogue and uh, like none of it's wasted. So did you get any, did they sit you down and, you know, teaching you how to edit and help with the camera, but did they show you how to write or is that all you? Not really. I didn't actually, I didn't start writing stuff really until like three or four years ago I actually like sat down and wrote that and wrote stuff I mean I think before that I took a I took an improv class at a summer camp once I think it was the same summer 2012 so I was like oh well I could just like improv all these videos so like most of the Mosho episodes of like the original Mosho series thing were basically like I had an idea of like the overall thing and then I'm like I'll just like improv all the dialogue and then you know I was sort of like maybe it'd be better if I wrote it out I wouldn't say, I mean, I'm sure they've influenced, they've a hundred percent influenced me with, with that. And I'm sure they have made, they've a hundred percent made suggestions of like, Hey, you know, I don't know if you need that or like that doesn't entirely work, but I don't know. I don't remember a, a, a talk where they're like, all right, Sam, <laughs> bring up the chalkboard. Yeah. Uh, this is no. a three act structure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, at, the, at the very beginning, um, going back just to those beginning things, um, Mo Monster was there from really from the start, and it was called the Zing Zongs. That was uh, the name of your. Did, w- where did that name come from? I don't know. I was just like, well, it needs to have a group name because like there were some other like puppet YouTube people at the time, and some of them had like a group name, and the Muppets, of course, have a group name. So I'm like, well, I need a group name. So I was like, well. I don't know. I didn't. I don't think I had an origin for that. Just, uh, Zing Zong. This sounds kind of cool. And then over time, I was like, I I don't know what that is, and I don't think anyone else knows what that is. So I ended up changing that. But uh, yeah, I'm surprised. 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 You pulled that one out. <laughs> uh, listen, I do my research. I also wanted to know. Uh, you know, like as I said, Mo was there in those early days, and um, you know, you you started so young making these videos. When you started going, you know, I, I'm sure you were in school when you started, but when you were in school and junior high and high school and all that stuff, were you still doing, pu- like, were you studying things to help you with the puppetry or was like the puppetry just a side thing you were working on? I would say it was mostly a side thing. I didn't, I mean, like the schools I went to, of course, had like art classes and that kind of a thing, but there was, I didn't go to like a, I know some people went to like a creative arts high school. I didn't, I didn't do any of that. But no, I, I did always try to like involve it in school projects. I remember in third grade, which is when I remember when I started I, doing puppets, I did like, it was like, well, you have to do a project on forest animals. So I made like this, in in retrospect, horrible frog puppet, tree forest frog or something. And uh, I, I like stapled all the, like the hand, because I did, I did this like live hand thing and I stapled it because I didn't want to sew it. 
my parents joke about like because i used to like make those puppets and try to send them to like aunts and uncles or whatever and, like do not they will like their hand will come out and be gushing blood Could not give them a <laughs> but uh, no i did that frog puppet for a project i had a, a latin project where i made a puppet video and i guess well i guess in middle school i started i did a lot of theater stuff with puppets i uh i had a theater teacher mrs clark uh who's very was very supportive and i think worked uh with henson for a little bit i remember she she talked about she remembers dying big bird feathers and she had heard about me from one of my teachers because i mentioned one of my teachers i was a puppet person and she was like oh well this theater teacher you know she does puppets and she really wants to do a puppet show or something so i was like okay so then immediately mrs clark was like all right, i bought all this fabric and i want you to teach all these kids you know how to make puppets and we're gonna do a show about uh, an evil scientist and his zombies. So I want you to play the scientist, a puppet scientist, and I want you to teach everyone how to make zombies. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so no, but it was really fun. And I, I, yeah, I taught everyone how to make zombie puppets that semester, that school year. And then by like, from like September to May, I think we finished the puppets by May and we had those in the show. Then in seventh grade, I was, uh, was Jean-Luc the frog, who was like, it's like a frog prince type of thing, but he was French. I don't really remember <laughs> why but I was on the frog. And then uh, I think I just did some hu human acting stuff in eighth grade, but I was uh, Charlie in the chocolate factory. And when the kid gets, is it Mike TV? Is that his name? He gets shrunken down to the TV. They had yeah. to do a puppet version of the kid. <laughs> I had to make the puppet and I was in a little TV setup at the end, but yeah, no, it's always been uh, involved in my school stuff. And people were definitely aware that I was the puppet kid. But it it wasn't really directly involved with what I was studying. I wasn't never took like a puppet class in uh, grade school or anything. Like that. What resources were you using to learn how to build puppets? Like, were there any books or anything that you you glommed onto or videos or a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the Muppet, the standard Muppet dweeb books, uh, you know, like <laughs> works, uh, Puppets of Men, all those I I, I got. I remember I was I was a huge fan, uh, and I eventually got to meet him uh, of James Kemp, uh, who did a bunch of puppet building videos. And I remember like I learned so much from watching those videos, and that that helped a lot. And then I also I got to meet uh, Marty Robinson when I was really little. So I can again 2012. It all comes back to 2012. <laughs> but uh, I got to meet him then, and he sort of I brought a bunch of my puppets, and like I showed them to him, and he gave me gave me some suggestions. <laughs> um, no, but he was really cool, and he showed me you know all these different materials you could use, and use this type of foam, and you ever heard of gasket rubber and all that kind of stuff. He he was I think in particular really helpful with also those James Kemp videos, and come in close close second. But yeah, awesome. So at the very beginning, because um, I went back and I did watch uh, some of your earlier videos too, but at the very beginning, you're talking about seasons and seasons have, have kind of continued in your videos up until relatively recently too. You're talking about, oh, this is the season finale and we're going to start a new season. So how did you schedule out your seasons? Or was it just like, oh, I've made this many videos, I'm going to start a new season? Or was it like every I year or how'd you do it? I mostly didn't. I was basically just like, all right, well, TV shows have seasons. So I'm going to do that too. And that was pretty much my whole reasoning. I didn't have really on many ongoing like through lines, really. I don't think until a little later on, I would say it, it was weird because it was basically just little one-off videos for the first three seasons. And then by the time I got to like the fourth season of the Mo show, it started to get a little more complicated. And I was like, all right, because I think I, I started to, without thinking of it, becoming more interested in like filmmaking and writing. Cause I didn't really, I didn't really jump into any of, the, of these videos thinking like, well, I'm going to make a film and it's going to be a character arc and blah, 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 blah. I was just like, I want to make a video with a puppet. That was mostly my thinking. And it wasn't until, yeah, like probably season four where I was like, Ooh, well, what if I brought over this character from this old episode? And what if I took this in and I, I pulled on this storyline or that sort of a thing. So the episodes and the storylines became more complex as I as I got older, and then by the end, I think the the funniest comparison is probably by the once you get to the Mo Show finale, that one is like, because I I had sort of thought because I think by the time I did like the first the last like two or three Mo Shows, and I like sort of planned those out, and I was like, well, I have to wrap up. There's a character named Timmy Goodman, 
for those who those who don't know, uh, who uh, was sort of a bad guy. And then I'm like, well, how do I wrap up that he was a bad guy? And like, I don't know, maybe like redeem him, maybe. And then I look back and looked at his first appearance. And he says like, all right, well, I'm going to destroy Mo Monster because I looked his name up in a phone book and he's really popular. So I'm going to destroy him to prove myself as a bad guy. And I'm like, well, that's really stupid. So <laughs> how do I bring that back around? And I'm like, all right, well, maybe that's just how you do it. Is he says, well, that was really stupid. And then he sort of reflects on that and is like, maybe I shouldn't have done any of that because it doesn't make any sense. Your especially your recent stuff is is shot so well. And there's like you can just tell that there's thought given to the shots and, and how it's gonna look. And um have you studied filmmaking or are you currently studying filmmaking? Uh how did you learn all that? Uh yes. I took a couple of film classes in high school, I think junior, senior year, and I was like, I I really liked it. Uh, it was really cool. And my teacher, Mr. Sturpey was really supportive. And like, I had also, he knew as a puppet guy and he, I like made puppets for some of his theater productions he was doing at the same time. But again, I was, I never, I didn't really think of myself as like a film person. I'm like, well, I'm a puppet person, but my sister was very like insistent that I was not necessarily just a puppet person. She was like, when well, you're filming, you do film stuff. Like you make videos. And I'm like, that's nah, just with the puppets. But, uh, yeah. So yeah, I wrapped up. The Mo Show finale, the day before I went to school, I went to UConn uh, for Puppet Arts, and I loved it. But I, one of my favorite things to do at UConn was I made all these like side projects. I did uh, Creatures Features, which was a thing about two Frankensteins who like switch parts. Uh, my friend Ash and I, we did a video about like puppet gymnastics. And then by the end of the year, I did a thing called The Puppet Detective, which I wrangled all these people up, and it was really fun to do. But uh, so I did all that stuff. And I'm like, I really like doing that stuff. And there were there weren't a lot of opportunities to do that sort of video stuff within the classes. Uh, as much as I love, I don't want to I want to be clear, 100 percent love UConn. But I, I just I really like doing that video stuff, too. And I was like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe my sister's right. I applied to NYU film school and that's that's where I am now. But, yeah. Excellent. Well, you know, I mean, when I was looking through all the stuff on your channel uh sure. and i see a lot of it but just in, in t for this interview like i watched your 48 hour film festival film uh no hope for fun um that that you made for the la guild puppetry uh 48 hour film festival and there's just so many great shots in that and like to you know like and and you're just really good at in terms of shooting and editing and knowing where uh things are going to end up and how things are going to look do you storyboard your stuff out or are you just kind of you have it in your head and just shoot it I think that one was storyboarded. I started storyboarding I 2019. I probably storyboarded stuff. Yeah, I, I've I'm I like drawing and stuff a lot. So that that's always sort of been a thing where I I I for a, a, a while since 20 yeah, probably 2019, I want to say. I've been storyboarding this stuff pretty uh dramatically. Just for, for the last Dino episode, that one I storyboarded like every single shot. Uh, before we did, I think there probably I think there was more shots that I think we didn't get that I probably put more in the storyboard. But yeah, I I especially recently I go I I go pretty hard into the the storyboarding and uh, trying to make sure everything's planned out. I had a teacher a couple years ago who was really really insistent on you know making sure you have a good storyboard or shot list or whatever before you uh, get everything going, and I 100 percent like took to that and I was like wow he's right because he was like oh you know I'll most of your production is pre-production. That's been really helpful ever since then. Yeah, your stuff, your stuff is so great. Whenever a new video comes out, like I'll I'll text it to Russ Walco and I'll be like, check this out. This is so great. Like the shots are so, so awesome. And um, because like a lot of my stuff, I film like very because I'm just hugely influenced by sort of Mystery Science Theater 3000, where it's one camera, it's static, and that you just cut to other things, but it's all just one camera, you know. Yeah. Um, and you're sh like there. Uh, I mean, we can talk about, uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, Rooming with Dino, but um, like there's just a great shot in this recent one, the Halloween one that came out, where it's just his nose sticking out the door. And he's, cause he's like, like that just killed me. And it was like, this is so brilliant that you thought of this uh, thing. So yeah, I mean, maybe I should start storyboarding my stuff too. Cause I can, it really shows in your work that you just really put a lot of care into your videos. That shot that was something i thought in the dino one that was something i thought of in the in the writing process where i was like 
I was like, well, he's not because in, in the episode, uh, Joey, who's Dino's, Dino's roommate, sort of uh, uh, yells at him and isn't particularly nice. And I'm like, OK, well, how does Dino come back around? And I'm like, well, it's again, it's sort of influenced by my character where it's like, all right, well, he's not he doesn't really want to listen to him, but you need to he needs to get back on board somehow. So it's like, well, what's how can I show that? So I just was like, well, if you just stick his snout out and shows that like he's paying attention, he's not necessarily on board. Um, but yeah, talking about sh- we talked about shooting that a slightly different way where it was just like, I was trying to think of some ways, like, is there a way to do like an over the shoulder of just the snout? And then you see the other thing and we were like, nah, it's not going to work. Uh, so we ended up shooting it the way we did. But uh, yeah, I was, re- I was very happy with how that turned out. And that took quite a few takes to just see, because I was like, because I think because we had like a little crew for that one. And I was like, can you guys just like wait one second while I try it? And then they're like, it took me like four takes or whatever just to get this out, not to see any of his eyes. But uh, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with how it came out. My, my uh, uh, crew for that was very, very patient with me, which I. <laughs> well, and uh, another kind of storyline I wanted to talk about uh, before we move on to other things, uh, just about the Mo show was uh, you did a, did sort of like a, a couple video arc called On the Run. And yes. like, uh, was that all scripted out and was that all uh, planned? Uh, not really. I think basically the thing with that is there was a point with Mo Show because I sort of cut off Mo Show and did that for a little while. I was basically like, I'm way more interested in Timmy Goodman than I was in Mo for a little while. Because uh, Mo, I mean, there's plenty you can do with Mo, but at that point I was like, well, Mo's kind of static. I guess at this point, because, you know, he's just kind of the host of this show and that's sort of what he does. But I'm like, oh, but this other guy, he's like trying to get in and Mo and he's trying to break into his studio and he's trying to do all that stuff. So I was like, that'd be more fun, I think, to do to focus on him for a little while. And then I was like, all right, well, I can build up that character Uh, because Mo, we've known at that point for like five, four years, whatever that whatever that was. Uh, And I was like, well, if I build up that character, then maybe he can he can reach uh the same status as mo's that once they collide there you care about each of them just as much but i think i might have imbalanced it (laughs) because you spent probably more time with timmy before the finale than you did with mo but uh i don't know but i I was i was mostly happy with how those came out i think like that on the starting with on the run is by is around the point where i'm like i can go back and look at those and i'm like i'm still pretty happy with that how many versions of mo monster have there been so from the beginning because scrolling through your page it's like oh he looks a little different here he's a little different here and then yeah well there was a there was a a version made of felt that i don't think ever saw the light of day on the youtube channel and he had he was a similar body shape to the first one but he had like because he was he was live hand but then the other hand i'm like well no one's gonna see that so i gave him like a triangle for his other hand but i'm like i don't know why i did that <laughs> Uh, and then there was the first version, uh, which is in like the first uh, horrible video. If you go back and look at that, uh, where he has little spoons for eyes and uh, it's just had like cardboard, cardboard mouth, it's just sort of a loose baggy body. Uh, and he had these tiny little legs. I don't know if you ever saw it, but the legs, the puppet's like maybe, <laughs> I don't know, a foot tall and his legs are maybe two inches. Uh, <laughs> something I used to do a lot. I don't know why I did that. But uh, yeah, there was that version. And then there was... Um, I have a more compact version with rod arms. Uh, his head shape was, I guess, closer to what it is now. And then I, I think it was 2013 because I saw Elmo in person and I put an older version of Mo right next to him. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy's so small. So it's like, I kind of would want him somewhat similar. I don't know why. I guess I don't really know why. But I would like, I would kind of like him to match sort of the size of those because I was like, it felt more legit. So I made Mo a little bigger where he has sort of that round head and the eyes stuck together. And then I had that version, I think in 2014. And then I changed him slightly because that guy was getting kind of ratty. So I, I rebuilt his head with a different fur, but I think it was close enough. And then just last summer, summer of 2022, I just, I rebuilt him from scratch. And that's the one I've been using since then. But yeah. Excellent. And you've built all the versions. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, absolutely awesome. Uh, another series I wanted to talk about uh, with Mo is, um, well, there's actually two, actually. Uh, oh. You did a couple of videos where Mo uh, and a couple of your characters went to New York Comic Con. Yes. And is is that something you would you would like to do more of, like where it's Mo interacting with people out in the out in the world? 
Yeah, those are really fun. Yeah, I did those. I did the Comic Con ones, and then for the Dino show, I ran around Washington Square Park, and I I ran up to people with Dinos, like, hey, and I, I would like go up to them before, like, okay, so this, I just want to know, is it cool if my dinosaur puppet asks you a couple questions? And most people are like, yeah, sure. But yeah, no, that stuff's really fun. Uh, it's it helps helps the improv uh, uh, skills build a little bit. And uh, yeah, no, I, I'd love to do more of that stuff. But it, it, I would say I, I generally prefer narrative stuff, but that that stuff is really fun. Yeah. Well, those are those are uh, super fun videos. And the uh, the other uh, sort of series I wanted to ask about before we uh, totally move away from the from the Mo Show is uh, Mo Monster and, which is a yeah. series that you did, uh, where you you brought in a lot of uh, other puppet acts was did that start like kind of during the pandemic was that a pandemic project or was that after the pandemic it was a little bit after because i was going to nyu i was like well i'm gonna be in the city and it would be fun if i like saw some of those people around the city and i was like hey you know would you want to do like a video with mo or you like interviews you and i'm like well that would also be a really fun thing to do because most most of the stuff i did with mo before that point was very like long drawn out narrative stuff like the like the mo show finale is like a 10 minute long thing and i'm like i've never really tried my hand at like the super short uh stuff and i'm like again i think that would be a good thing to you know help build the sort of comedy muscle and just see like can i because basically the format is is like i go up to a puppeteer who i think is pretty cool and i say hey do you have a character you want to use for this and they say uh yeah i would like to use blankety blank and his deal is blankety blank and i'm like okay so I'm like, all right, well, what can Mo pick at for whatever that character is? Uh, and it's basically do that in a minute and try to fit in as much as you can. Uh, and that's sort of been really fun. Yeah, I did. I started, I did a round of those last fall, 2022, which you were involved in. And I was very appreciative. Uh, it was super fun. It was super fun to do. Yeah, it was great. And then this fall i think probably next week we're starting up the next round and work on that one for a while we shot the first one in january uh so these have been in the works for a while but yeah i think it it's been a really a really fun project and it's been really fun to collaborate with a lot of different people because i haven't i hadn't done that a whole ton before this but yeah i think it'll be really good and it would be a fun thing to check out <laughs> a little later after this releases there you go. Perfect. Well, we'll have, I'm going to have links to all your stuff in the, in the show notes for sure. In a lot of your videos, uh, you do like basically all the voices for all the characters. Uh, how tricky is it to film both sides of the conversation? I would say it gets a little tricky. Uh, there are, of course, I, I, I get help sometimes. I mean, the voices are all me, but like there was the Mo Show finale when they're all in the basement uh and they're all like talking to each other sometimes if there was a group shot my sister would jump in and she would hold them up for a second or my for one shot where i was like all right well i want the camera to whip around for this i got my mom my sister and my dad to hold up all the characters for one shot where i'm holding the camera and i'm doing that so that they uh my friends and family have definitely been a huge help with that it gets it gets a little tricky i think it's not necessarily hard to keep track of like which character is which but it's more just like because there was, again, in that same Mo Show finale, there was one time, and it was during the pandemic where I was shooting that, and I was in a basement, and it was like two in the morning, and I was one character on one side of the basement, and I was three other characters on the other side of the basement, and I would just go back and forth between, like, the four different characters. And at a point, <laughs> you know, it was already a pandemic, I wasn't seeing anyone, and, uh, you know, I'm in a basement, it's two in the morning, I'm just like, I'm going insane. <laughs> All the four different people, you know, as I was just like at that point, I was just like, I don't know if I could, you know, keep doing this forever. So that worked out that that was sort of the finale of all those uh characters. Um, but that's it's been really nice doing the the Dino show and the Mo Monster Ants because it's like, wow, it's not all just me talking to myself. This is so great, but yeah, no, it wasn't a huge problem in terms of keeping track of the characters, but it it did start to uh, uh, be draining of starting to yell at myself in 50 different ways. And how often, I mean, because I know if I'm stu shooting stuff by myself, like I do a million takes before I'm ever remotely happy. And even then I'm not happy with what, like, are you kind of the same way where it's like, I'm just going to do it? Or it's like, oh, I think that line's good. I'm going to go. Usually, I would say usually, especially if it's just me. Uh, if it's like Dino or something is different because there's a crew there and I'm like, I do not want to keep them waiting for 40 hours while I do everything. 
most of the time. Um, I don't want to, but I, I did have my DP came up to me. I did like a Dino take like four times and she, she was like, I think you need to move on. And I'm like, <laughs> no, yeah. But usually when, when I'm by myself, it is, it's usually just like do as many, as many as I can take until I, I get it right. I, you know, maybe not great for my own personal health, but uh, that's, that's what I do. But yeah, it, it is, that's usually the case. But again, if I'm in a, a setting with other, with other people, it's, it's usually like, I gotta, gotta try and move it. But yeah. What are some things you would love to do with Mo in the future? Do you have any ideas of things you'd really like to do? I don't know. I'm really happy with what we're doing now of J the Mo Monster and stuff. I guess over the summer, I did a, a video called Mo and Bill are Salesmen. And that one was really fun. And then right after that, I did a, a video with Richard Gomez and uh, Gav, where it's called One Bed, One Bath. And it's Mo is like stuck in a hotel room with these two characters. And those have been really fun. And those aren't necessarily like the same format as Mo Monster Inn because they're sort of in a different location. And there might, there's a little bit more going on in those. I guess I would like to do more of those. But those have just sort of been like... I want to do something different or like with the, with the Mo and Biller salesman, I was like, usually, cause I usually have some big summer video and that I, I was really busy over the summer, but it was like, I was, I was like, I still really like to do something. So that, but yeah, that I did that. And that was, I was really fun. That was really fun. I was really happy with that. Uh, and then working with Richard Gomez on Gab and that other video, I was also really happy with that. And that was really fun to make. So I guess just more like little skits and stuff like that is, is really fun to do. Uh, I'd like to do more of that. And, I would also, you know, not be against, you know, doing Mo on TV or something, but I don't, I don't really know what that would be, but yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, as someone who has been creating uh, videos for well over a decade for YouTube, uh, in your opinion, what are the qualities that make a really good puppet video uh, on the internet? Ooh, I would generally say, don't come at it from, I'm going to make a puppet video. I would say generally that's the rule because it's like, all right, well, well, I guess it, it, it depends on what you're doing, of course. But uh, with my stuff, it's like, all right, well, you kind of need a general story that you want to tell or a message you're trying to convey somehow. Start with that. And then also something that was sort of, uh, I'm trying to say, that was told, told to me uh, at UConn was, uh, you know, don't do a puppet video if it doesn't have to be a puppet video. And uh, that I've started to try and do more and more where it's like, try to make it seem like it, you can only do it with, with a puppet because like the Dino thing is mostly like, it kind of has to be, you know, a dinosaur roommate or else like the whole thing doesn't work. Uh, so I would say, try to make it a necessity that it's a puppet and not necessarily just like, Oh, here's my puppet. So whatever, which I'm, I'm hundred percent guilty of doing that, but I try, I try to avoid it as, as much as I can. Uh, and then also, you know, uh, just putting, you know, as much care as, as, as you can into it and, yeah, you know, storyboarding it. And that's why what I like and what I try to look for. Excellent. Uh, well, you mentioned before the puppet detective um, yeah. and that you made in, in 2022 or that's when it came out. Um, can you tell a little bit about uh, what the story is about and how you came up with the idea and, and shooting it? Yeah, well, that was that's uh, that was an example, I think, of when I, I, I first started sort of started to employ that technique really heavily of like it has to be a puppet video. Because that one is sort of about, I was like, I think that November of 21, I was sort of thinking about, I'm like, because I just, I just made that creatures features thing at UConn, which is like these two Frankenstein puppets and people really liked doing that. It was really fun. So I'm like, all right, well, what would be another fun thing to do with, with people? And maybe I could, you know, because I, I had a lot of actor friends at UConn. So I was like, well, maybe it would be something that'd be fun to include some actor people. And, uh, and also also in the back of my mind, having this like, it has to be a puppet sort of way of thinking. So I was like, all right, well, maybe it's a, it's a puppet detective and he has to solve a case about something. And I'm like, all right, why does it have to be a puppet? And I'm like, oh, well, maybe it's, maybe, well, I think I, I think I thought of that first where it's like, okay, this puppet is made up of all these different materials that are from a scene of a crime. And he has to figure out what to do about that. And I'm like, okay, so that kind of, you can't, it can't, that can't be a person that has to be a puppet in that case. So I was like, all right. So I, I felt really happy about that. And I sort of uh, liked sort of the, the message of that, you know, was sort of, you know, this character sort of uh, sticking, you know, to his values and sacrificing uh, for other people uh, was, was something I, 
I, I liked about that. And I was like, all right. So I think I, I basically, I pitched that around to, to the other folks that were going to be in there uh, in that video. And everyone seemed pretty on board and uh, yeah, everyone was really, was really excited about it. People were very nice about it. And, and uh, we had to uh, show it. We get to screen it for everybody at UConn and it was, it was really fun to write, but you know, that's, that's sort of how that happened. Excellent. Uh, well, you have done some um, more and more work, sort of like on on bigger productions. Uh, so I want to ask a couple about a couple of those. Um, and so first, I would love to ask about Boyish Charms and uh, what that was, and and how you got involved, and and what you did on that. Oh my gosh, I'd love to talk about Boyish Charms. Uh, yeah, with that, I was a very small part of. Well, I, I had friends. I was friends with Yaniv Frank at UConn, you, you know, he was at UConn at the time, and he was sort of telling me about this idea that he had for a big uh, grad student project. Uh, he sort of pitched it to me. I'm like, oh, that sounds really cool. Uh, but then what was really uh, not not cool was that the year he was supposed to do that, I, I left to go to NYU. And I was like, dang, I'd really like to do that. I guess that's not happening. But anyway, he texted me, I think that November, and was like, hey, turns out you can still do this. It's allowed somehow. And because we're going to shoot it in January when I was off from school, uh, would you want to play this bully character in that? And I was like, yeah. Oh my gosh, that sounds awesome. So it was great. I got to like, it was like a little uh, reunion with all of those uh, Yukon folks. And uh, yeah, I was a bully character. I think his name was Barry. And Barry uh, uh, tells the main character, uh, you know, all these things that you need to do this and this to be a man and blah 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 uh and then you know it's sort of fun to play that sort of villain character and to work with so many other puppeteers you know that's not uh again with like a lot of the videos like i said it's just me in a basement at two in the morning yelling at myself so it was really cool to be in an environment with so many other uh great great performers and uh work on this really fun project so yeah, that that one that was really fun and you also did some work on a project called feel your best self as well uh can you tell us a little bit about that one Yes, uh, I was doing, I was at UConn while that was happening, and uh, that was another, Yaniv Frank was working on that, John Cody was working on that, Stoff, Shear was working on that, Jamika, a bunch of people, and... Uh, Jamika Collins, just want to make sure we get the full yes. name in there so people know, yes. yeah. It was awesome, uh, but um, I think they sent out a note to the U, the puppet people at UConn, and they're like, hey, we are looking for PAs for this. Uh, if anyone wants to do it, let me know. And they were shooting for like, I think two weeks. And I was doing a production of Little Shop at UConn at the time. And I I think I, we had rehearsals like every night or something for a while. And I was like, oh, I'd love to do that, but I can't do this thing. But we had one day off, which was Thursdays, I think, from rehearsal. And I begged one of my professors at the time. I was like, can you please let me miss class for a day so I can go do this thing? And he was like, yeah, okay. So I was like, yes. so I went to, I took a bus with some other Yukon folks to the studio and yeah, so I got, I was, a, I was originally listed as a PA but because John Cody was working on that and he'd known me from before. And I think he had maybe talked to some of the other puppeteers. They let me uh, do some rod stuff where I got to, I got to assist with some of the characters and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. But yeah, that was really fun. And everyone was super nice. And uh yeah, I really I like doing that one too. Perfect. Uh, well, I was I we we've talked a little bit about it before, but I, I do want to give it its own little spotlight here. Um, but sort of your latest project. I mean, I know you're doing stuff with Mo, but is rooming with Dino. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us how this uh, idea came up? And it sounds like, from what you've said, this is a little bit of a bigger production uh, than other things that you've worked on. Yeah, uh, definitely. So the summer. I came to NYU, which is last summer. I had a friend uh, who said, hey, you know, my my boyfriend really, really likes, uh, you know, puppets. And, he, you know, he thinks they're pretty cool. And he sang like Manor Muppet for an audition or something. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And I just kind of had that in the back of my mind. And then the fall, during the fall, and I think like January, I was kind of like, I'd really like to do something, like an ongoing series or something where like, I'm a puppet. And somebody else is a human and they're a duo doing some sort of sitcom type thing or something. And I was kind of talking to people. I'm like, would you want to be involved? Would you want to do this? Or would you want to be involved with this? And I'm like, all right. 
And then what happened was this during the last the spring semester, uh, I took a TV writing class with a professor who actually who did some work on dinosaurs. Apparently, it was, I ended up being unrelated. He was sort of like, all right, I want everybody to pitch uh, an idea that well, you're going to write throughout the rest of the semester. Like, okay. So I think I had an idea where I was like, okay, I could, because I had had ideas before about like, oh, a Timmy Goodman spinoff of the Mo Show and that kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, but I've dealt with those characters for so long. I kind of like to do something different. So, all right, well, maybe it's a dinosaur. Maybe it's a guy with a dinosaur. Because I'm like, all right, I hang out with my parents a lot. One of my best friends in NYU uh, is a little bit of an, uh, he's a little older than me. So I'm like, well, I have experience with like generational differences. And that feels like a way to max that out is to have a guy who lives with a dinosaur. He doesn't know anything he's talking about. Like, okay. And the dinosaur could be a puppet. So I kind of pitched that to the class and we read some pages of stuff I had written. The first scene I wrote was the the scene where Joey, the main character, is on the phone with his mom. And it's like, I can't believe I have to live with this dinosaur. And I wrote that. I was really, really happy with that. So I took sort of a condensed version of that first one and I shot it. And I, so I was trying to think, I was like, if, okay, if I, if I were to shoot this, who could be this guy? And I was like, oh, Tristan, who was uh, my friend's boyfriend. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So uh, her and, and Tristan came over and we shot the first episode and I was really happy with it. And they were both really excited about it. Yeah, that was, I was really happy. We shot that first one in or spring break in March. And I was really happy with that over the summer uh, in I think July, I came up with an idea for a Halloween episode and I'm like, Oh, that would be really fun to do that. And I think I have like just enough time to like write this and figure it all out before we shoot it. So we shot that uh, like mid September and I edited like a crazy person uh, till Halloween and I put that one out and I was really happy with that one also. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's been a really fun project. Yeah. It's uh the first one was just the, three of us ariel who's the dp uh tristan and me and then the second one we had a crew i think of four including not including tristan and me and also we had a wonderful uh actress who who auditioned for us uh, jolie is her name who played uh joe's girlfriend in the episode and uh yeah that was it's been really fun to do something a little more collaborative than just like the most stuff from sitting in a room by myself uh and that's been a really fun project and people i've been really happy with it people really liked it so i i, I really want to do do more of those and it sounds it sounds like most most people are, are cool with doing those so hopefully there's more of that coming down the line yeah i hope so too it's really fun i do want to ask uh who built did you build dino yes you did oh he's yeah he's a super fun puppet he's like super yeah. cute and yeah i i made uh, the puppet i was rushing to get the pup i don't think the puppet was the first version of the puppet was done until the morning before we shot the first one. Uh, and then over the summer, I kind of looked at it and I'm like, I'm not super happy with the head because the head kind of like lumped over. So then I I went back in over the summer and I sort of made a more a little bit more of an intricate pattern. And then I redid it and I rebuilt his head. And now I, th I think he's, he's a little cuter now, uh, which is nice. But yeah, Excellent. Well, Sam, as we wrap up here, I always love to ask at the end of every interview, what has been the highlight of your puppetry career so far? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I guess I would say the schmaltzy answer, but also the, the true answer uh, is the people. The people have been ridiculously nice uh, in the puppet world. First of all, you uh, have been incredibly supportive. And I've, I was a huge fan of your stuff before you even said anything about my stuff. And I was like, oh, my God. Well, thank you. Marty, who I mentioned, has also been very supportive since I showed him my horrible puppets in 2012. And uh, Leslie Kerr Rudolph and, and Paul have been uh, very supportive also. Uh, all those folks, all the Sesame folks, uh, all the people, even outside of the puppet world who I brought into here at NYU and at UConn, uh, have been just incredibly nice and a very generous with their with their time and their patience of hearing me run about it, yell them yell them about like oh my god i have this idea it's a puppet detective and he goes in and then he does this but no i would say that's been the highlight and uh not necessarily unexpected but you know people say like uh don't ever meet your heroes but i'm like i just met all of them and they're all the nicest people i've ever <laughs> met but uh, i guess that's that's been my my favorite thing excellent well sam it was such a pleasure to get to talk to you today and thank you so much for being on under the puppet 
No problem. I'm happy to do it. Thank you very much for having me. Big thanks to Sam Kendall for being on this episode of Under the Puppet. For related links, visit the show notes for this episode, episode number 89, over at underthepuppet.com. And to hear a little more of my talk with Sam Kendall, download the free Under the Puppet app for iOS and Android and click on the gift icon in the listing for this episode. That's going to do it for this episode of Under the Puppet. I want to send a special thank you out to all of the Saturday Morning Media Patreon patrons who help make the show possible. Patrons at the producer level and above who get a special shout out are Eve Cunning, Kathy Crawford, Tony Urbano, Brandy, David Akers, Paul, Scott Armstrong, and Vicki Sebring. To become a patron, visit patreon.com forward slash Saturday Morning Media. And thank you for your support. If you have questions, suggestions, or feedback about the show, call our voicemail line at 818-806-9604 or click the Call the Show button in the free Under the Puppet app for iOS and Android. You can also send your feedback via email to underthepuppet at gmail.com or you can connect with the show on Instagram or Facebook by searching for Under the Puppet. Thank you so much for listening. This episode of Under the Puppet was edited by Steven Staver and features music by Dan Ring. Help spread the word by sharing your favorite Under the Puppet episode with a friend. Under the Puppet is copyright 2023 Saturday Morning Media Grandpa Choco Executive Producer. All rights reserved. www.saturdaymorningmedia.com Under the Puppet proudly presents the adventures of Timmy the Tooth Reunion. In this almost 90-minute video, you will hear great stories from the cast and crew who brought this amazing puppet show to life. Plus, you'll see never-before-seen artwork and exclusive behind-the-scenes video. Under the Puppet's Timmy the Tooth Reunion is available right now at timmy.underthepuppet.com. You've been listening to Saturday Morning Media. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.